What I think are the best strategies for building a local economy is number one, to think about how you can reduce your economic leakage. So that means everything from how many folks are sitting in your community on the couch ordering on Amazon, to how many contracts have been awarded to large companies that don't bring value to your community. Take a company like Staples. You all are familiar with Staples? State of Arizona has a $5 million contract with Staples. You're like, well, what does that have to do with economic development? Staples brings the state of Arizona 65% part-time employees with no health care benefits. Those employees end up on our state's health care plan. Who's paying for that? The residents, right? So I like to, I like to call on somebody uh, uh, out of the audience usually and make the point using my record store. You look like a music fan. I'm going to give you 50% off forevermore, lifetime 50% off in my store. All you have to do is pay for the health care of my employees. <laughs> yeah. So raw deal, right? It's really expensive. Health care is very expensive. We all know this. So we need to be looking, my point in telling you this is we need to be looking very holistically at our spend for the state to award a contract thinking they're saving money where the guy across the hall that runs the, you know, the healthcare program for the state of Arizona, those two guys need to talk to each other and recognize that we're actually losing money. We did an economic study that proves we're losing a half a million dollars a year on that one five million dollar contract. That makes no sense. So reducing that economic leakage and thinking differently about the way we're uh, awarding contracts. Another example, how many of you are familiar with Cabela's? Cabela's store, right? Most people think they're in the business of outdoor sporting goods, tents, fishing tackle, et cetera. That's not their main line of business. Their main line of business is subsidies, okay? They average $35 million per store in subsidies. That is money coming out of your city and state coffers to go to pay for, for them to move into the region. In, in Arizona, they claimed they were going to be the state's second largest tourist attraction after the Grand Canyon. How many of you have ever traveled to Phoenix, Arizona to visit Cabela's? Anybody? Come on. It's really cool. Right? Okay, they averaged $35 million per store. How much do you think they got for the one store in Arizona? $68 million. They got free land, free infrastructure. They got a 10-year sales tax abatement. That means you walk in and buy a tent, you pay your sales tax, they get to keep it for 10 years. That is money coming out of our libraries, our parks, our trash collection, our education system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, suddenly you realize those aren't cheaper prices. That's deferred billing, right? We are paying for that in a totally different way. So the first thing any community needs to do on their path to becoming healthier is to reduce that economic leakage. <clears throat> we want to avoid the big wealth strategy. We do not need a yet another big box to move into our community to save us. Uh, I really think that we need to rethink the way we are incentivizing companies to move in. Now, I'm going to be the first to admit there's a huge difference between a chain retailer and a base industry sector job. I understand that, but I also believe that the base industry sector job, we really need to look very closely at those deals we're doing to make sure that they benefit our communities and, and instead don't move in and extract wealth from our communities.